So I don't think Activision is gonna be too happy about this video here, guys, because you see we got a documentary about Call of Duty. Yay! And we're talking about how Fortnite ruining Call of Duty and Activision being mad about it. I don't believe that Fortnite is what ruining Call of Duty. We're gonna get into it. Do you believe that greed is what's killing Call of Duty? Like the video if you think greed is what's killing Call of Duty and gaming as a whole. Dislike the video if you think it's uh, perfectly fine to have the BBC bundles. The $20 BBC bundles bundles, the $100 skins, the $80 King Kong bundles, microtransactions are now costing more than the games itself, damn it, but check this out, roll it. How did Call of Duty go from a gritty game for men to a gritty game for children and losers? Well, let me tell you. I've been playing Call of Duty ever since the PS2 days, back when I had to hide from my parents that I was a World War II veteran. Growing damn. up during the amazing yeah. Xbox 360 PS3 era, I loved Call Guys, when, when did you start playing Call of Duty? For me, it was Black Ops 1 14 years ago, man. Yeah, 14, 14, 14 years ago. I posted this over on my Twitter. If you guys got Twitter, I would definitely love to have you there. I let you get to the content now. Call of Duty. It was where boys became men. I played COD religiously with my friends every day after school yeah. and made countless unforgettable memories. We didn't know it back then, but it truly was the golden era. Comment if you remember those days. And after playing arguably an unhealthy amount of these iconic games, like the OG Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops 2, oh, no. I was left dying for more. And it had me curious, yeah. how awesome would Call of Duty be 10 years from now? Yeah, well, man, when Black Ops 2 first came out, I literally took it for granted. I was a kid, damn it, at that point, but I took it for granted in a way because I was like, there is no way it can get worse than this. This is amazing. Black Ops 2 is amazing. You know, it was a gift to humanity, but uh, guess what happened after that? Uh, they apparently ruined it. Let's just say I was in for an unpleasant surprise. Wow. Not true. Impossible. In recent years, Call of Duty has become unrecognizable from oh, its former no. glory. What used to be a game for men is now a game for children, and cod suckers who are incapable of hiding their wallets. What was once a franchise loved for being badass and gritty is now spin on for being cringeworthy and greedy. But how did this happen? What caused Call of Duty to shit the bed like we did playing Black Ops 1 Zombies on Kino Der Toten? Well, if you ask a longtime Call of Duty fan, Call of Duty is turning into Fortnite, and we all know it. Activision was like, out with the old and in with the new. I don't even know what to call this. What the f***? On the surface, it's easy. That, that's how Call of Duty peasants, Call of Duty uh, microtransactions lovers are like, hey man, Activision, you want the money? You want the money? I'm ready to buy the... I'm ready to buy... <laughs> I'm ready to buy the... Fairly uh, yeah, bro, it's it's wild. When when you got people defending the hundred dollars microtransactions by saying that it's just a reward by Activision, <laughs> yeah, a true story. I'm not making this up. If you didn't know, we ended up getting eighty dollars King Kong bundle, uh, Monkey Punch <laughs> in Call of Duty, and people were like, it's just a reward by Activision. Bruh. Then right after that, we got a hundred dollars weapon skin in in the shop. Right, basically, I believe you have to spend hundred dollars. The uh, two get that skin so you buy other microtransactions for hundred dollars and then you can get it and people are like you know what it's beautiful it's beautiful look at activation they're so nice they're giving us a reward i okay bro like this is why we cannot ever get any content by these suckers out here. This is exactly why we don't get content, bro. Easy for fans to distinguish the older games from the newer games, but if we dive deeper into the negative effects Fortnite has had in Call of Duty, it becomes clear as day how anti-consumer COD has truly become. On the other hand, many fans claim Call of Duty is way better than it used to be, but to them I'd say, <clears throat> you're f***ing wrong, and possibly deranged. The historic franchise is headed towards an irredeemable place of greed because of it, also, probably another Snoop Dogg skin. Nonetheless, let's explore how Fortnite ruined Call of Duty and how to fix it. A fix somehow- In my honest opinion, Fortnite did not ruin Call of Duty. Bruh. It did not. It's Call of Duty that ruined itself by chasing the Fortnite bag. Fortnite, I, I don't play it, but whenever I do, very rarely, I don't even remember when was the last time I played, but the last time when I played, I actually had fun playing that game. It's just that the reason I stopped playing is because I'm- It's- 
you know what I mean. It's not for me. But whenever I play, I, I have fun time. I actually truly do have fun time. And they really do bring in a ton of content. It's a free-to-play game. It, it cares for the community. And it also does crazy amount of events, which are free as well for everybody. And the events are truly insane. With Warzone, when was... Do you even remember when, when was... When was the last time we got the event in Call of Duty? I don't... I, I, the only one that I remember was the, the King Kong and Godzilla. And before that, it was like Vanguard reveal. And before that, it was Black Ops Cold War reveal. I just remember these three different events in the entire history of Call of Duty Warzone ever since they dropped all the way back in 2020. So four years ago, right? Three events in four years. <laughs> And Godzilla event was considered to be the worst by the community. Van Garbage event was considered alright. Black Ops Cold War was considered the first ever event they did. Was considered the best event. And guess what? That's the only event that they did. Right? They did, right? They did, right? And I have been saying, bro. Like, if you're gonna copy Fortnite, at least copy their events formula too. And drop events. Do a ton of events in, in the game, bro. How COD fans can understand, but 3,000 developers cannot. Hit that like button, subscribe to the one if you missed the old COD. And if the skin made you gag, holy sh**. The hardest part about explaining how Fortnite ruined Call of Duty is the fact that there are so many issues to cover. But since we know that greed is Activision's main motivator, we can easily identify all the bad that has come out of this. Just look at it. Look at it! It's ugly, isn't it? You look at it! Hello. <laughs> if you're a long time Call of Duty fan, you've probably been told the same old cope. You're just blinded by nostalgia. Graphics are better than ever. There's more developers than ever working on the games. And we're getting more free content than ever before. This all may be true, but this is the position you take if you're an Activision fanboy, Stockholm Syndrome paste eater. It is true that negativity outweighs any sort of positivity in the COD community. Yeah. And maybe some people do just hate for the sake of hating. But to claim there aren't real problems in Call of Duty right now Holy. is downright delusional. And as for everyone with a brain understands, Fortnite is the lead clown in this circus. So it's For, okay, in that aspect, Fortnite did ruin gaming. Bruh. Because, uh, but, but it's not Fortnite's fault, though. It's like, self-accountability is a thing, too, right? Everybody started following in the steps of Fortnite because they saw how much money it was making. So in that regards, I yeah, I do blame Fortnite in terms of, like, it being a trendsetter. Yeah, sure, I bl uh, blame that. But, like... You also need to take self-accountability, like Activision, nobody's telling Activision to do it, but Activision want to do it themselves, and they're killing their game because they really want to chase the bag. Greed is really, yeah, greed is what's killing gaming right now. That's basically where I'm at, but I want to know your thoughts too. It's but... time to break down how Call of Duty went from the glory days to the gloomy days. Let's be real. Call uh -oh. of Duty may as well be uh -oh. renamed to Call of Fortnite at this point. Call of Greed. Call of Bundles more expensive than the game of the year. When you play Fortnite, what do you see? You see a bunch of goofy ass skins fighting in a goofy ass environment. You have Marvel superheroes, Greek gods, freaking Family Guy for crying out loud. But at least you can say, you know, it works for this game because they made the game from scratch up, and it wasn't like uh, an already existing franchise. For example, like this, uh, I wish I could unsee it, but like Lara Croft, right, Tomb Raider. So they literally destroyed her character. <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> So, Lara, Lara Croft is now Lorenzo. Lara Croft is now Lorenzo. As people are saying, this is uh, like Lara Croft, but in Call of Duty. But but the real Lara Croft game is also going to be woke because uh, we, we had that drama not long ago, but we still have to uh, see the character. I believe they made the character, which is a little bit nerfed, like uh, the real, real Tomb Raider uh, Lara Croft character is nerfed. But the, the Tomb Raider Lara Croft uh, representation in Call of Duty... Hell on earth! It's a, it's. I mean, it's a different character now. They made her uh, into a Lorenzo, so now it's Lorenzo. Like the video if you want to see Lara. Dislike the video if you like Lorenzo, man. Uh, I don't know, man. But 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 the see but see the thing is that at least Fortnite didn't had like. Uh, a game that was uh, different, right? They just made this... Uh, Fortnite basically was a new game. They made it from the ground up, and it was supposed to be like this. Now, Call of Duty, on the other hand, they're literally changing the game, is what I'm trying to say. Just like how they, they apparently changed the Lara Croft character into Lorenzo, so... Yeah. This oddly makes sense, because Goofy is Fortnite's theme. Teenagers and pathetic adult losers are their target audience. So there may be characters and collaborations from multiple different settings, but it fits, because that's the theme of the game. When you play Call of Duty, what do you see? You see Nicki Minaj, Homelander, and a freaking rubber duck. Not much different than the children's game, right? Now you know damn well there's gonna be codsuckers commenting right at this second. 
don't like it, don't play it. They gaslight you into believing you should just play the game and ignore the cosmetics, ignore the shop. But yeah. they don't think about this. You're playing a game called Modern Warfare. The Three. maps you play on are based on that same Modern Warfare setting. Two. When you mix in a freaking sloth with military dudes, that breaks the whole point of a game maintaining a theme. I don't know about you, but as a Call of Duty veteran, the sight of Nicki Minaj fighting alongside Captain Price on a battlefield in Modern Warfare sickens me more than the tragic reality that Modern Warfare 3 2023 exists in the first place. Just don't play the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what the Call of Duty uh, COD uh, suckers would be saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, I, I hear the point, but personally, listen, I, I did not buy Modern Warfare 3, so I'm not even playing it. So my opinion do not uh, matter in this one. But if I was playing the game, maybe my opinion would be different. Of course, it would be different if I was playing the game. But personally, I... Generally speaking, I don't mind the the skins, the wacky skins in the game. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. I feel like the campaign should be absolutely realistic for a game like Call of Duty because Call of Duty Foundation has been like real military feel but arcadey as well. So it's like realistic but not realistic. So campaign, I'm all up for campaign being campaign being super ultra realistic multiplayer can be arcadey uh and non-realistic and if they want to add skins yeah go for it my biggest problem and issue is that when your game content just becomes skins and bbc bundles and Nicki minaj's bunda and a hundred dollars weapon skins when the the microtransactions truly uh be become the main content of the game it's and, and you gotta understand the game is 70 dollars. so you buy a 70 dollars game and then if you want to play with new content you gotta pay again and again and again and again and again that that's truly where my personal uh, personally that's truly where i'm at that's where my uh th that's that's what uh, i i truly find problematic with the game because they're tr now prioritizing not now they have been uh for a while like duh they have been prioritizing microtransactions over actual content in the game that people can truly enjoy that's where my problem is at Place. If you told me during the golden era that this is what Call of Duty would look like, I would have turned you into an Infinity Psych Ward. Speaking yeah. of, let's return to the good old days for a moment, but I shall hear we? His point. Call of Duty his 4 point. was the beginning of what we now call the golden era of the franchise. Arguably the most underrated aspect of the game was the fact that there were no operators, which we now know makes a huge difference. Believe it, it or it not, does. there it were does. no pigeon people. Based on the map environment, each character factions would adjust accordingly. This made it so that everything from the gritty atmosphere, the war-torn maps, and the intimidating soldiers all matched the theme of the game. If uh, it's like the same thing. I, you pro if you have been around the channel, you probably heard me say that, right? Like Battlefield 3, the reason I loved it so much was because it had that real military feel, but it still didn't take itself seriously. But it took itself seriously in a way where we had like soldier skins real military skins so like assault engineer support they were doing these classes recon as well and it would have a very distinguished look and real gritty military look to it so it was like us versus russia you're gonna see like the true military uniforms and engineer class is gonna have like a specific look uh, it, yeah we didn't have any of the specialists and any of the bolt squash right and the game really it really felt fun actually uh I, I don't it did had like an element that it added to the mix it was like the cherry on top that you constantly hear whenever people want to drop metaphors right so yeah i, I truly uh I absolutely i do believe that yeah 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 i agree with that fulfilled the concept of a word that starts with i that call of duty lacks desperately in the modern era Immersion. immersion immersion nowadays yeah. you literally have a clown show in multiplayer matches how literally. can you take a game like mw3 seriously when there are characters from all different settings that have absolutely nothing to do with the traditionally gritty feel of the franchise even zombies has been ruined by this zombies i would never all, yeah. dare to play zombies alone back on world at war or black ops 1. sure it may not have been realistic but you could feel the atmosphere you felt legitimate fear that's because the developers stuck to the theme of the mode Imagine if they allowed you to use some furry rather than an iconic <laughs> character like Richthofen. There's oh, nothing immersive no. about that. Although Black Ops Cold War Zombies was generally beloved by the community, it just didn't have that same horror same feel, feel to it. Yeah, it, it all goes back to maintaining the theme of the campaign. I know many. Quite, quite frankly, though, Black Ops Cold War gameplay for for zombies was always uh, something that I admired, and I still like the gameplay aspect. But other than that, I truly didn't enjoy Black Ops Cold War Zombies because uh, here's the here's the thing. <sighs> I, the reason I didn't was because I 
came from a time when I played Black Ops 1 Zombies, Black Ops 2 Zombies, Black Ops 3 Zombies, and those games were far superior in terms of quality. You also had a, a real Zombies crew, and the Zombies crew had, like, real quotes, and it mattered to the storyline, but if you didn't even, if you don't care for the story, it still felt good. For example, I remember Nikolai saying, hey, my fourth wife never touched me dead. My wife never touched me dead. Right? It had, like, crazy amount of really solid dialogues with uh, maturity behind, but also wackiness behind. Like, my wife never touched me there. It's like the way he would say was truly just crazy, and it also uh, had sarcasm, an element of sarcasm uh, built into it, uh, and it just works so so good. Uh, Black Ops 2, they done like the OG, uh, I believe the premise characters in, in Origins, Nikolai Taku Dempsey and Rick Toffin, but Mob of the Dead, they had like different cast, Shadows of Evil different cast, but at least they had a cast, and the cast was good. It was phenomenal, the map was truly enjoyable as well, and whenever you, if you were to ask, and whenever you decide to ask any person that played Call of Duty Zombies, and you ask them what's your favorite map, you're gonna either hear Mob of the Dead, Origins, Kino, or Their Eyes and Dracha. And then, they would also, if you if, he, if they have played zombies for a long time, they would say, yeah, Shadows of Evil was pretty good as well. Shadows of Evil, I love Shadows of Evil. You're not necessarily gonna hear them, uh, you're not necessarily gonna hear them say, yeah, bro, like, you know, that map that came out in Black Ops 4 Zombies, Black Ops Cold War, that was my favorite. Unless that's how, uh, that's when they started playing the game. This is why I'm like, hey, where did you start? What was your first Call of Duty game? Many COD players only play for the multiplayer experience and skip past the campaign. I used to be one of these players, but the campaign mode is important because it's supposed to set the tone for the game. Think yeah, about all yeah, the yeah, iconic yeah, yeah. missions from the classic games like All Gilead Out, The Shepherd Betrayal, and No Russian. You'll never feel the same emotion that those games provided. But the point is, as bad as the MW3 2023 campaign was, <laughs> it still kept a serious tone. Oh, no. Like how can you go from this in one mode? My comrades! We stand reunited to restore glory to Russia, the real Russia, to this and another. The all-new Bullet Buddy. Boom! I'm stoned and I can't get up, man. What the hell is even that? Like what? Make it make sense. But it wasn't only the atmosphere and the soldiers that created immersion. Remember the old announcer's voice? Enemy yeah. chopper incoming. Uh. Enemy airfield on 30 above! Enemy helicopter approaching! Enemy airfield on 30 above! Mobile ready for deployment. Aircraft 71 ready for launch. The urgency and panic in his voice immersed you in yeah. the experience. Yeah. Like the panic that settles in when I'm heading home from Taco Bell. And let me tell you, <laughs> the AC-130 was above and below. And you ever oh notice how God. boring the matches start out nowadays? It's like, yeah guys, go get them. It looks like they got a couple ladies in pink with massive gazungas and a... a sloth? Wait, is that Snoop Dogg? What the f- Now replace that Snorefest with the startup the music from Black Ops 1. Yeah. Massive Crazy, difference, man. right? It brings Crazy, intensity yeah. to the experience and actually does justice to the modern warfare theme. So yeah, you can thank the influence of Fortnite- Call of Duty lost its soul. It lost its soul for the immersion breaking changes to the core Call of Duty experience. But these skins don't only kill the immersion. If you play Call of Duty, or even Fortnite for that matter, you're probably familiar with the infamous term, pay to win. The official AAA business model. What if I told you that if you bought a skin from one of these cringe bundles in Call of Duty, that the game would give you an advantage over other players? <laughs> what if I told you, the player who bought a skin, that you are paying Call of Duty to market their cosmetics for them? Yeah. I'm just gonna say it. The game is rigged. is rigged. If you read these Activision patents, it explains how the game intentionally matches players who have purchased these skins with players who have not. In other mm. words, you will likely get easier lobbies if you bought a skin. Yeah. And the game will give you an unfair advantage because that's Activision's way of saying, you want to be like this dork? Buy this glove for the lowly $80. price of $80. Yeah, and people, you want to know, I, I was talking about it earlier, right? Like, people were like, it's just a reward, bro. It's just a reward. It is just a reward. Activision is being nice. 
And, and yeah, UMM, skill-based management, and they file patterns, which is something that we discovered all the way back in 2019. And back then, a lot of people didn't believe that is it's true. But now, everybody, the cat is out of the bag. Everybody believes that bull squash. And, and it's a really good point that he brought, and I heard this point somewhere else as well, where, for example, we, we really are, like, it, it's free marketing for Activision, right? If you're somebody that buys, like, the BBC bundles, uh, the $80 King Kong bundle, the $100 weapon skins, like, $20 skin here, there, here and there, uh, they're gonna match make you with uh, people that potentially might not have that same microtransaction or skin that you have, and they're gonna see, oh, shit, that look good, that look good, that look good, and they're ultimately gonna be exposed to it, and they're gonna be like, oh, okay, that look good, let me actually go into the shop, and <laughs> let me just uh, bust out $20, $30, or in this case, $80 to get that King Kong bundle, so, yeah, you buy it, you're kind of like free marketing for Activision, and it's like a, a snowball effect after that, then more people are gonna see it, more people are gonna be curious, and more people are gonna be aware, and then more people potentially are gonna be buyers, ultimately uh, making Activision rich, and this is why you constantly hear every every quarter they report their earnings, and this is why you constantly hear, yeah, they, they made like $3 billion this quarter, yeah, $4 billion this quarter, off of just microtransactions alone. The game uh, uh, would probably do like a couple of billions uh, throughout its life cycle, but like this would, microtransactions would do tens of billions uh, in the entire given year. So microtransactions uh, makes them more money than the game itself. Just let that sink in. And maybe you could be a sweaty loser too. And as a result, the cost suckers are reeled in and they're stuck in the endless void of buying microtransactions. Or in the case of Call of Duty, macro transactions. You want to see mega, true microtransactions? Mega. Play Helldivers 2 and fight for democracy. You could even look at Black Ops 2. Treyarch sold camel packs for $2 each. It enabled I you to show off that. a cool looking camo like Weaponize 115, and it wouldn't take away from the immersion. In fact, it actually paid homage to Zombies Mode, which zombies. made the game modes interconnected. Finer details like these are what made Call of Duty full of life back then. However, Call of Duty. Two dollars, you remember that? I remember some people were complaining, and I wish a lot more people complained during that time. Just like how we had the Helldivers 2 debacle recently, and it's still ongoing by the way, I made a video on it. Apparently, uh, Sony have re-reversed it. What I mean by this is that, yeah, Sony, uh, people complain about Helldivers 2 uh, needing that PlayStation Network account on, on PC. And they banned the game in 177 countries because those countries don't have access to PlayStation Network, thus making it impossible to play Helldivers on PC for those people in those countries that don't have access to PlayStation Network, right? That happened, people complained, they reversed the changes, and they made it, and they confirmed that, okay, now you're not gonna be needing the PlayStation Network, but now we're figuring out that the game is still banned in those 177 countries where PlayStation Network don't exist. So it's like we won kind of like round one, but uh, now Sony is like, hey, round two, round three. Uh, <laughs> you gotta fight for round two and three, though. So there is that happening. It's like, and Xbox is making like a, uh, they made a massive boo-boo recently as well. We have been covering that drama. It's like gaming is out here just out here to get get all of us right now bro today is full of sh cod uses a matchmaking system called engagement optimized matchmaking or eomm not to be confused with skill-based matchmaking eomm is designed to keep you on the game for as long as possible but why you may be asking listen whenever you're asking why activision Money. makes any bonehead decision just understand that it all Money. goes back to greed it's Money. as simple as this the longer time you spend playing the game the more likely you are to cuck out and purchase bundles it'll even go as far to tamper with your connection hit the damage and more every time I go on a kill streak in MW3 I lag I die and then I spawn die 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 but it gets worse in Fortnite, there's a huge controversy over AI bots in online matches. Much of the community argues the bots make it way too easy. Either you play against an easy bot lobby, or you play against esports champion wannabes. It makes you suspicious when a massive game like Fortnite, with millions of players on multiple platforms, acts like they need to implement bots to optimize their matchmaking system. You probably know where I'm going with this, don't you? I'm sorry to inform all you COD suckers, but AI bots are confirmed to be in Call of Duty multiplayer in yeah! Warzone. So next time you see a dude dry humping a wall, now you know. 
Again, the reason COD uses bots is to keep the match as close as possible, to increase player engagement. So if you lose a few games, don't worry, MW3 will spawn you a CDL Prodigy and get you the win, and it'll probably look like this. And if you have a room temperature IQ, it'll make you think, wow, maybe if I buy that $80 glove in $100 camo, then I'll finally get good. No, I am sadly not joking about those prices. Again, macro transactions, not micro, unless you're talking about the consumer's brains. I, I would say mega transactions, I would say mega, and yeah, micro, <laughs> micro brains. It all ties back to Call of Duty following the Fortnite trend of monetizing microtransactions and making collaborations that have absolutely nothing to do with the theme. It destroys mm. the chance of an innocent casual player from ever having a true experience of the game. Uh, any of you that are currently playing Fortnite, uh, let me know your experience. You like it, you don't like it, and mo most importantly, this is why, uh, uh, this is what I wanted to ask. Uh, okay, if you play Fortnite, do Fortnite have $80, $100 microtransactions? Of course, it got like, the last time I checked, like $20 skins, uh, Battle Pass as well, $10 Battle Pass uh, at that time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, 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 what's the prices? Or how, how the price is looking like right now? As a result, COD has become the epitome of the failing AAA industry. Speaking of failures, let's not forget about the uh -oh. fan favorite Battle Pass, the uh -oh. live service monetization model that encourages COD sucker behavior and discourages player progression. But before we get into the Battle Pass, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. I swear I will not charge you $80 for my next video. Now with that being said, <laughs> let me ask you this. Do you remember the traditional prestige oh, system man. before the Warzone era? Call of Duty used to have a- Yo, that's a prestige master emblem though. I remember that. That that was from Black Ops 2, because I remember I I became a prestige master in that game. Do you remember the tradition? Holy crap, that's from Black Ops 2. Gotta be. Or either Black Ops 1 or Bla no, Black Ops 2. That's what Black I believe the first one is Black Ops 1. This one I don't know. Perhaps World at War? Or this world ever? Okay, the the first one I know this is black from Black Ops One. The rest I don't know, but in total, in to uh, yeah, the the emblem as a whole is from Black Ops Two. National prestige system. Before the Warzone era, Call of Duty used to have a real prestige system. You had the Crazy. option to enter a new prestige level until you eventually max out. Or I remember not. prestige and gave me something to seriously grind for in COD, which kept me engaged and motivated to play the game rather than devious algorithms like SBMM or EOMM. Imagine yeah. that. It reminds me of an instance like this back on Black Ops 2, when Treyarch told us to take it easy on the Christmas noobs, even though they knew damn well we were gonna wreak havoc. How refreshing would it be to have that type of understanding and communication from the developers? It sounds like something Arrowhead Game Studios would tell the Helldivers 2 community. But oh wait, there's no PvP in that game and they don't want it. I wonder why. Anyway, when you go from that classic prestige system to the Fortnite model we have today, it feels pretty yeah. depressing. Wanna know the craziest part in all this? The Battle Pass has snuck its way into all your favorite games, not Crazy, just Call of huh? Duty. But in Call yeah. of Duty, each season you level up through tiers to unlock weapons, skins, and other items. The concept isn't inherently bad. That is until you lock your best- uh, and, and I'm gonna sound like a, an 80 year old boomer right now, but like I don't understand how the battle pass system works nowadays. Bruh. Uh, because pr previously it was like, uh, you know, you would go right and left and you would have just the icons showing up right, just left to right, and you would see items. Now it's like zigzag. <laughs> Now it's like that, they made the zigzag kind of thing. It looks just awful on the eye to somebody that don't have any knowledge on it, right? I, I didn't buy Modern Warfare 3, by the way, so this is why I'm so, like, out of the loop with uh, Call of Duty. I'm hoping that Call of Duty 2024 is good. Bruh. But, uh, it, I don't know, man. We say the same thing every year, but we buy it. This time I didn't buy it, and if Call of Duty 2024 turns out to be bad, I'm ready to skip that, too. Yeah, I'm ready to skip that, too, but, like... Uh, yeah, the zigzag thing, if you're familiar with it, like, of course, if you know how this works, do you like this? How do you feel about it? I I'm curious to know what Best items thoughts. behind the paywall and prestiging, if you could even call it that, is now a vanity metric. Nowadays, you automatically prestige and you don't even lose your levels or anything you unlock. Where is the reward in that? These 3,000 developers need to implement the classic prestige system that actually respects our playing time. But the cost suckers will tell you, But I already earned it! Why do I have to grind for it all over again? Why grind for anything when I can just buy the battle pass for the metal weapon? It's a broken system. And the worst part, the next season comes and the metal weapons you unlocked in the prior season become outdated because they got nerfed. The developers nerf these weapons in order to push you onto the next battle pass. If the skill gap is as simple as whoever is using the meta weapon, you could argue the game forces you to buy the battle pass in order to even compete. Hence the concept of- I didn't even bother learning how this worked. I didn't even bother learning because it's like, yeah. 
Uh, prestige system, yeah, sure, like, some people don't want to prestige over and over again, some people would just prestige once and that's it, but I think the incentive is actually there for those that, that, that want to grind, so I think, yeah, absolutely, prestige is Call of Duty, Call of Duty had prestige, like, whenever you say, whenever you, back in the days, I remember, uh, you know, kids would be like, hey, look at me, I'm prestige 5, I'm prestige 10, I'm master prestige, yeah, people would, the first, question they would ask if you told them you play call of duty they would be like hey what prestige are you what rank are you what prestige are you and then you would go from there so prestige is call of duty the fact that they got rid of it why why you know people already had the option to not prestige if they don't want to prestige i feel like that they should have kept the prestige and enhance it what i mean by this is that find diff different ways for people to grind uh, and unlock keep unlocking stuff when they prestige give people more incentive to prestige because the only incentive back then we had was you prestige you lose all the the stuff and you have to regrind but you would get an unlock token you would get a token that you can use towards unlocking one item permanently or l let's just say a, a gun that would be unlocked at rank 50 now you prestige so you're rank one but guess what you got the unlock token you can use that to unlock that rank 50 weapon and use it when you're like rank one uh, yeah uh, so they could have just went in that direction where they would give us more like incentives uh, right and make people want to rank up more because ranking up the game yeah like you know eventually you would get tired of playing the game but if you have ranks to grind for you're like oh shit like i want to be prestige master so i'm gonna keep on playing till the new map drops and when the new map drops you play even more and you rank up you play more and uh, it, it, it was quite enjoyable back in the days actually pay to win it's driven purely by fomo because it puts a time limit and all this exclusive content. And that exclusive content is mainly just useless stickers and charms. It's literally filler content. But we got a few deals for you. If you pay $30 for our Black Cell Battle Pass, you'll get all oh, the exclusive man. content, like this dumbass yeah. skin. We'll also give you 1,100 extra COD points, so you can be obliged to spend more on our bundles in the future. <laughs> like, it makes no sense. I'll tell you this, though. The only positive thing I have to say about the early Modern Warfare Warzone days was earning more COD points than you spent if you completed the Battle Pass. <gasps> Let me get this straight, though. You're Okay, so you're saying, because the last time when I bought a Battle Pass, you can, like, grind the entire Battle Pass and you would get Call of Duty points out of it, and that you can use to buy the next one for free in a way, right? So you're saying that now you don't get the same amount of Call of Duty points? Bum you want us to pay full price for a game that has no business being sold for more than a masterpiece like Helldivers 2 and then you want us to spend $30 more each season? If there's six seasons, Activision is basically asking for $250 for you to Crazy. play this game. Is Crazy. that not insane to you? And of course the keyboard warriors are going at it right now. Well actually, you can buy the battle pass for 1100 COD points but you just won't get the skins you wish you had. But let's be real, Activision knows damn well what they're doing. If a player yeah. has to pay $20 for a lesser tier, the logic behind it is, why not spend ten dollars more Extra. for more content? That's for exactly more. how they reel you in. Yeah. Remember how COD points? It's the it's the same thing, right? Whenever you are looking to get a PC or looking to buy something, hey, that's a you know what? I'm just gonna shave a little bit more. Uh, simple logic, right? PS5 digital or PS5 with the disc version. Uh, you would go with the PS5 disc version more than likely. Not true for everybody, but more than likely you would go with it. Fifty dollars extra or hundred dollars extra. Don't don't remember. But but you would go with that just just in case. Just in case you would ever buy a game or rent a game or you know get it from your your buddies. And in the the in the making of PC or building your own PC, you would be like, okay, that part is that much. Okay, but if I wait a little bit or if I save a little bit more, a hundred dollar extra, I can get a better I can get a better spec. So it, it's like the same thing, right? Uh, and they're utilizing that okay so twenty dollars you get this much but for thirty dollars you get that much look at that for ten dollars only ten dollars uh extra you get that much so it, it, all in all you end up paying thirty dollars and uh, they make a lot of money that way though this used to work in black ops one cod points were not in-game currency you could purchase like v bucks in fortnite or call of duty in yeah. the modern warzone era yeah the wager ones were used yeah. as a progression metric what do i mean by that well COD points were acquired by playing the game and completing challenges. You had to play to earn them, not pay. Yeah. And they were used to unlock new weapons, 
perks, equipment, even camos or face That was a good this system. fundamental system encouraged you to get good. It's all the brainless mouth breathers like to say nowadays. And again, it, it was like real player versus player experience and you would wager, wager your Call of Duty points and if you win, you would get a lot of Call of Duty ba uh, points back and you can use to buy stuff in the game without using your real life money to buy crap. It was like l real way to get Call of Duty points, the good Call of Duty points. One in the comments if you remember that, and if you got to this point of the video, definitely drop a one in the comments, let me know. And guys, check out this video on the screen because this is truly what's going on. I talk about like a PlayStation re-re-reversing it, right? Check out this video on the screen. This is what they recently did. And we got news about Black Ops 6 in this video as well. And Xbox, uh, are they canceling the Game Pass thing with Call of Duty? Are they not? What's going on, right? Check this video out on the left. This video is on my second channel. And uh, yay, second channel, guys, second channel. And I'll see you right there.